Why was the American Baptist Church aiding the savage Henry Morton Stanley? The Livingstone Inland Mission was an evangelical missionary society that operated in what is now the Democratic Republic of the Congo, DRC, between 1878 and 1884. Although this mission was initially funded by Henry Grattan Guinness and his wife Fanny, it was later supported by the American Baptist Missionary Union, which is now called the American Baptist International Ministries. The mission was named after David Livingston, the famous British explorer who viewed Africa as the ideal place for white men to settle, bringing Christianity, commerce, and civilization to Africa of all things. In 1884, Guinness offered the Congo mission to the American Baptist Missionary Union, which was headed by A.J. Gordon. After Gordon attended the International Centenary Conference on Foreign Missions in London in 1888, he decided to open a mission school in Boston, Massachusetts, where missionaries could prepare for the work in the Congo. It is interesting to note that Gordon was impressed by the work of British missionaries in Africa, but one wonders what he was truly impressed by, as most missionaries were aiding in African colonization. British missionaries such as the Anglican Church Missionary Society, the London Missionary Society, and the Wesleyan Methodist Missionary Society also conducted missionary work in Africa. However, the type of Christianity spread by British missionaries during this time was, was tied to European cultural norms. Emphasis was placed on European dressing and culture as a form of civilization. Missionaries believed they would channel the three seas into Africa, commerce, Christianity, and civilization. Missionaries and their, thereafter quickly became agents of British imperialism, whose mission in Africa was to modernize Africa by combating godlessness, superstition, and backwardness. The American Baptist Missionary Union, under the leadership of A.J. Gordon, took over support for the London Inland Mission. The American Baptist International Ministries, formerly known as the American Baptist Missionary Union and the American Baptist Foreign Mission Society, is an international Protestant Christian missionary society founded in 1814 in the United States. It is a constituent body affiliated with the American Baptist Churches USA. The organization is the oldest Baptist missionary organization based in North America. Fanny Guinness, who initially started the Livingston Inland Mission recorded a cautionary note concerning funding in the Constitution of the Society of the 1890 book. That as it is the aim of the mission to introduce into the vast Congo Valley as many Christian evangelists as possible, and as it, as it is believed that land and native labor can be secured at small cost, the agents of the mission shall be men willing to avail themselves of these advantages and resolved to being as little burdensome as possible to the funds of the mission. No salaries are guaranteed, but the committee, as far as a means of doing so are placed in their hands, will supply the missionaries with such needful things as cannot be produced in the country. The Livingston Inland Mission and Henry Morton Stanley. Henry Morton Stanley was an explorer who was most famous for his enabling and plundering of the Congo region by King Leopold II of Belgium. He is also famous for finding Livingston on 10 November 1871 near Lake Tanganyika in present-day Tanzania. In 1874, the New York Herald and the British Daily Telegraph financed Stanley on another expedition to Africa. Some of his expeditions were aided by the Livingston Inland Mission, which provided him with one of the use of their boats, the Henry Reed. The Livingston Inland Mission was being supported by the American Baptist Missionary Union. This despite the fact that it was widely known that Stanley abused Africans on his journeys. There have been many quotes about the work that Stanley did in Africa. In the Dark Continent, Stanley wrote that savages only respect force, referring to Africans as savages, and that they only respect force power, boldness, and decision. In one of his books, Stanley said about mixed African-era people, For the half-castes, I have great contempt. They are neither black nor white, neither good nor bad, neither to be admired nor hated. 
They are all things at all times. If I saw a miserable, half-starved Negro, I was always sure to be told he belonged to a half-caste. Cringing and hypocritical, cowardly, debased, treacherous and mean, this syphilitic, blear-eyed, pallid-skinned abortion of an Africanized Arab. When Stanley first met a group of the Wangwana assistants, he was surprised. They were an exceedingly fine-looking body of men, far more intelligent in appearance than I could have ever believed African barbarians could be. Richard Francis Burton wrote that Stanley shoots Negroes as if they were monkeys. Immediately after one of Stanley's expeditions in 1877, Reverend J.P. Fowler met with African porters who had been part of the expedition and wrote, Stanley's followers give dreadful accounts to their friends of the killing of inoffensive natives, stealing their ivory and goods, selling their cape captives, and so on. I do think a commission ought to inquire into these charges because if they are true, it will do untold harm to the great cause of emancipating Africa. I cannot understand all the killings that Stanley has found necessary. Not surprisingly, the Baptist missionary Thomas J. Comer wrote about Stanley saying that by constant daily exercise of his tract and influence over the people, Stanley has succeeded in planting his station at Stanley Pool without a fight, despite being faced by Africans who are very fond of fighting and can master 3,000 guns. Stanley himself wrote that he had destroyed 28 large towns in the Congo. Once he allegedly cut off his dog's tail, cooked it, and fed it back to the dog. Henry Morton paved the way for Leopold to later plunder the Congo in his quest for, to extract rubber. There is no literature that shows that any of the missionaries in this region ever tried to stop the atrocities that were committed by explorers like Henry Morton Stanley. And in fact, the inland, the Livingston Inland Mission, which was supported by the American Baptist Missionary Union, provided resources such as the use of their boats to the savage Henry Morton Stanley. <laughs>